Hi, welcome to the Ruckus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Uh, this time we're going to look at a new feature in Ruckus Unleashed 200.8, which is ICX switch management. So up until now, we've been able to manage access points, but uh, the ability to now uh, manage our switches is a, a great addition to Unleashed. So uh, recently we've added uh, switch management into uh, Smart Zone and Virtual Smart Zone. Uh, and we've added it into cloud, um, and so you know, Unleashed is is really the continuation of that ability. So this should look familiar to you uh, if you've used Unleashed in the past. So this is the uh, 200.8 dashboard, and uh, what we see here is you know, internet, Wi-Fi networks, clients, access points, all those were there before. The new one here is switches. So in this case. We have three switches, I have two working, I have one disconnected. If I expand that out now, um, I can see here under switches, I have three total in summary. Uh, I have one in a pending state, I have two that are online, they don't show pending. Um, and I can also get a summary of my ports here. So um, basically I have total of 70 ports over those three switches. Um, I would actually have more if this pending one was online, but um, I have, uh, anyway, I have 70 total. I have 14 that are up and connected. I have 56 that are disconnected. So they show as available here. You could also have connected with warning or blocked by admin, but usually what you're going to see is, is available and connected. Um, it also shows me my overall PoE budget among all those switches. So I have available of 274 watts or 274,000 milliwatts. I've used 114.9 watts and I have 159 uh, watts available to me. So, um, and then under events and alarms, I can show that and it shows me overall events and alarms, right? So uh, in this case, events, these are just ICX is joining the, uh, joining the unleashed, but those are showing up as high severity events. And then I don't have anything under alarms. So, but again, this is a summary for all your switches. And then we can drill down to an individual switch. So I'll choose 7150 C12 here. Um, and so it's showing me the name, name of the switch that it's gathered and the, uh, and the Mac address. And I can show general info. I can see its name, its Mac, its IP its model, what its state is, its gateway, its version, um, serial number, last seen. So if it's, if it's offline, it will show you when, when the last time it was seen was, and it's uptime. So this particular switch has been up for 107 days and 23 hours. Um, under port info, just like we saw in the summary, right, we have connected and available ports. So I have three ports that are up. I have 12 that are connected out of, a, out of 16 ports total. Right, it's a 12-port switch, but then there's uh, two ports in module two and and uh, two ports in module three. PoE usage, so I have 124 watts. Uh, I'm using 28.4, and I have 77% available or 95.5 available. Um, we can look at the front panel view. So again, you know, ports that are up are in blue. Ports that are down are in red. Uh, the lightning bolt shows that there's a uh, power consuming device or a PoE device connected to that port. Uh, this is module two. This is module three. The S shows that it's a uh, switch board, designated switch board. Uh, if, I, if I hover over the little I here, it shows me um, a, um, a legend of, of what those look like. Um, we can also highlight a port and hit reset so basically disable and re-enable a port so if there was a poe device that you know needed to be reset something like that you could you could do the reset there and if i click on that it's going to say that it'll be reset after you click ok it's going to take a few minutes uh, i'm not going to do that but that is an option uh, the other thing is as we click on ports here it's going to highlight them in my list right so it'll change who's highlighted uh, from that list uh, but in the list here, we can see the port name. Uh, so it's, it's you know, gig 111, uh, MAC address, it's port number, uh, the link status is up, the admin status is up. Um, it's transmit, uh, transmit bytes, receive bytes, 
total, so 2.17 terabytes, uh, the speed of the interface, whether it's 1 gig or 100 or you know 40 gig, 100 gig, etc. The PoE usage, so I'm using 10.5 watts, but I've allocated 28.4. Uh, my untagged VLAN and my tag VLAN on that interface. Um, so some pretty decent information about the about the interfaces. We can also see traffic trends. So again, depending on what port you've highlighted, so on on port 111 here, uh, over the last one hour, it's showing me my uh, transmitted, my received, and my total. Right. So, uh, and then you can choose, you know, at what time frame. So this is this is the one hour list. But if I scroll back up to the top here, I have the ability to choose a data duration of 12 hours as well. So I can choose 12 hours of data, and uh, and then this will look substantially different in terms of the amount of data uh, transmitted, received, etc. Uh, there's an LDP neighbor list. So who, who's connected to this port? Well, there's an R730 connected to that port. Um, here's its name, its Mac, what type of device it is. So it's a WLAN access point, uh, Ethernet 1 on the R730. And then I can get the description it pulled from LDP. So it's, so it's a Ruckus R730 running uh, 5.1.1. Uh, under health, we can see the health of the switch. So CPU utilization sitting at 4%, so pretty decent. Uh, memory utilization is 47%. What you're looking for here is either really high CPU utilization, like 99%, that usually indicates a loop or some kind of issue, or maybe uh, memory utilization that's trending upward, right? So if it's if if you've got big route tables, big MAC tables, that might make sense. Uh, if you see some increase, however, you know if you constantly see your memory trending upward, perhaps there's a memory leak in the code you're running or something like that. Rare, but you know possible. Something to look at. Uh, power supply status. We've only got one power supply in a uh, compact switch, but it's up and it's okay. And then the one temperature sensor, uh, again, is is just fine. Under events and alarms, you know we uh, we see that one. Um, that one event, right, with high severity when we when we received it and uh, and no alarms. So that's the basic information. Obviously, this changes depending on the switch that you are highlighted, right? The number of ports will change and and information about it, etc., will change. Um, um, other things. So this guy here is sitting in pending, and so if I click on it, it will tell you why it's pending. So there's a few reasons. This one in particular. Uh, is uh, it's it's failed to recognize an IP address. The switch doesn't have an IP address, and it needs an IP at a minimum to join. Uh, but really, switches are going to be discovered here through LLDP, so they'll be automatically discovered. Um, but LLDP is basically a single hop, single hop technology, right? So if if you've got switches two or three hops away, um, LLDP hops like layer two hops, that is away from your unleashed, you may not see them here, so um, so they may not be discovered through LDP. Um, uh, other reasons why they would be pending is um, incorrect incorrect credentials. So the administra uh, administrator username and password needs to be changed, um, or auto approval is turned off. So by default, uh, the system will auto approve all the switches it finds. Uh, we can go into administration. So if we go into admin and services and system info, we see approval and this box is checked for automatically approve all join requests from switches. If you don't want that to happen from a security perspective, you want to uh, be able to approve those, then we can just unclick that box and apply that. Uh, and then from that then point that point on, excuse me, uh, those switches will sit in a pending state waiting for you to approve them. So instead of the continue box here, there'll be an approve box and you'll have to click on that uh, in order to approve it. Um, we also see that Unleashed system only supports ICX firmware of 8090 or later. So if you have switches running 8080, 8070, they're not going to join into Unleashed. So you're going to need to upgrade those prior. Uh, once they're upgraded, though, you'll be able to do future upgrades uh, in Unleashed. 
So uh, that leads me to uh, what we could do here. So if we want to manually add a switch, so I talked about LLDP. So if LLDP does not discover your switch and you need to manually add it, we can use the add button here. And then you can put in the IP address and the admin uh, username and password, and it should add those switches in. The edit just allows you to edit. Um, well, in this case, it's, it's waiting for an IP address, so this could change. But usually the only thing you can edit here is the device name, at least at this point. So if I choose a, a, a uh, working online switch here and I choose more, uh, I have the options to upgrade, to backup, and restore. So um, upgrade is going to upgrade the firmware, backup is going to backup the configuration, and restore will restore the configuration. So let's start with backup. So if I choose backup here, uh, what it's going to do is it, uh, it's going to take a second uh, in order to, to pull that configuration. So um, we want to minimize the impact of the CPU both on the Unleash system and on the switch. Um, so this is it, it, it does take a few seconds to gather this information, but what's going to happen is it's going to download a text file onto my laptop or, or whatever your device is. So we see that it just pulled this file, ICX config, and it's labeled with the MAC address of that switch. So this is just a text file. So it's, you know, humanly readable text file that's downloaded onto your local device. So really easy way to back up your configuration without having to, you know, use a TFTP server or an SCP server or something like that. Um, so I now have that local file. And then, you know, if I needed to restore that configuration, if I made changes and they didn't go well and I needed to restore, I could just choose restore and then browse to that local file, upload that local file, and then it's going to uh, reload the switch. To, uh, after it changes the startup, it'll reload the switch. The other and maybe more important thing that it does is you now have the ability to upgrade firmware. So if we say upgrade here, you can browse to a local file. So I can choose a local file on my device. So we'll choose SPR8092A, because I know this one's running beta one. It's gonna upload that firmware uh, into Unleashed and then and then uh, upgrade the switch and reboot the switch. So um, again, that's gonna take a few minutes, so I'm not gonna do it now, but what a great way to upgrade your switches. We've always been able to do it uh, with access points with a local file, but switches in the past were either, you know, TFTP, SCP, um, off a USB drive, um, there, wa there wasn't really an easy way to browse to them and upload them. So this is a great new addition uh, and a fast way to, to, uh, to upgrade your switches. So I won't do that right now, um, but that's basically it. So, so, you know, really your switches should be auto discovered into Unleashed, or at least if it can reach them with LDP. Um, if they go into a pending state, it'll tell you why it's pending. But for the most part, those should just get added in. Uh, you should be able to see the ports and the information. Um, and then, you know, if you need to upgrade, you need to back up the firmware, restore the firmware, you know, all that's there. So there could be additional um, functionality added in the future. I don't want to speak to futures at this point, but this is definitely a good start uh, and, and a uh, very welcome addition to Unleash. So I hope you enjoy the new feature and um, that's it for today. So take care. Have a great day.